Do your job. Marcos Vegas for FightHubTV.com, standing here with Phil Davis. Phil, we we're just talking about a funny story right now, something about a tweet, your dad hitting a deer. Mm -hmm. Let me know about it because it sounds really funny. Uh, my, my dad lives out in like the country, and uh, I was, he's taking me home, and he hits this deer. <laughs> and uh, you know I mean? the deer is like, sort of, it's like half dead, it's almost dead, basically. I feel, I mean, so we pull over, we kind of like scoot to the side of the road, and this guy drives by, he's like, y'all gonna eat that? I was like, no, man, we just hit a deer. <laughs> no, we're not gonna eat that. You know, he's like, all right, do you mind if I take it? I was like, oh, it's yours, man. <laughs> Go ahead. So. Yeah. Where, where was this at? I saw right outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. You've ever eaten deer? Any weird meats like that? Not horse meat, right? Uh, I think I had both. I love venison, though. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah. Never had it. <laughs> nice. No, it's, it's good. You'd be surprised how good deer jerky is. Would you contribute that to your, your physique? Because you're, you're a big dude, man. Mm -hmm. Well, see, nobody injects deers with hormones and all that crazy stuff. Getting in your chicken, getting in your beef. You know what I mean? Who knows what's going on with that farm raised salmon? Now you got me worried. Deer, deer is the last thing. Last yeah, thing out there. last natural thing out yeah. there. You had spoken about wanting to take a vacation after your last fight, and then you this you know opportunity came up, and you took the fight with uh, Rashad. You know what I guess made you change your mind about not wanting to take that vacation and uh, wait a little bit for your next bout. I mean, if vacations come and go. I can vacation anytime. You know, yes. beaches aren't going nowhere. <laughs> I get the beaches after August 6. You know, yeah. so. Business first, fun time later. What were your first thoughts when uh, they gave you the call for that fight? You know, what was going on through your head? You know, because I know every fighter, you know, takes a, takes a look back and says, "Okay, uh, I, I like this about this guy. I could exploit this and that." So, take me through that process when you first got that call. Um, when I, that whole process, you know, I get the call from my management, and they're telling me, "Okay." It, it, we go through the same process every time. They, they tell me the date. I'm like, eh, all right, cool. I, I can dig it. All right, what city? Oh, it's in Philadelphia. Cool. I definitely want to fight him. Who is it? I don't care who it is. Yeah. Tell me who it is. I don't care. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Oh, it's Rashad. Okay, cool. <laughs> Just simple as that. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Now, looking into uh, that fight, so what are you going to exploit in Rashad's game? Um, we, I mean, we come from the same background. We come from a wrestling background. Um... He does a lot of things uh, that are real dangerous, you know, real dangerous hands, good takedowns, he has some good, these good, brown, good ground and pound. Um, so, I mean, he definitely has a, a lot of, obviously since he was a champ, he has some um, real dangerous areas, but other than that, um, I, think I, I think I can steer clear of his, uh, his, uh, his power. Your last bout was uh, with Noguera, mm -hmm. and I wanted to get your thoughts on that bout too. You know, what having some time to look at it now. What did you like about your performance? What you didn't? What didn't you like about your performance? And what do you want to work off from that fight to improve for this bout coming in? Well, the good thing is he's a champion boxer, and he wasn't able to do the kind of damage that he wanted to me standing, which is good. You know, to me that's that's a victory in itself. To not get beat up for three rounds by guys a champion boxer, that's uh, an accomplishment in itself. You know, that's that would be equivalent to not getting taken down against a champion wrestler. So, you know, looking back, uh, I wish I could have done more, but I still did what I needed to do. So, I'm, I'm satisfied. How do you see your progression now? You know, because you coming in, you know, there, there's a lot of, I don't want to call it hope, there's a lot of expectation you know that you're gonna be one of the next guys to look out for in that 205 division so now that another question that comes up is how are you able to handle something like that you know that expectation that it seems like a maybe might be a burden on your shoulders I don't think so you know I don't worry about what people think I'm going to do I already I already know I got in this sport to be a winner you know I didn't come in to be oh so so or be 500 um, I want to win you know I want to be the best so I mean that's the expectation I put on myself. Um, now from there, I don't I don't let people try to influence you know what I should do or how I should do it or what it should look like. You know I, I win how I win, and uh, 
I, I go from there. You know, I listen to my coaches and, and myself, and that's it. Looking at this bout, do you do expect a title shot after you know your fight with Rashad if you're victorious? Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's it's not it's definitely not guaranteed. So you know, I I would best case scenario, um, I what I might be next, but sometimes it's a little iffy, you know, how things work out. So we will see. Would you prefer it though, or would you want some time to just kind of chill? Uh, I guess we'll see.